Macro photography encourages you to get closer and capture the tiny details on subjects whose details often cannot be seen with the naked eye. But a lot can go into getting the best shot possible. And in this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to capture amazing macro photos. Tip number one is you have to have a lot of patience when shooting macro. The shallow depth of field in macro photography can make getting a shot in focus extra challenging and a subject that isn't cooperative doesn't help either. Like this mantis here. I spent probably a good 30 minutes in this spot trying to get some quality photos of this mantis. Every time I got close to it with my camera, it would either turn its head or move but I stayed put and eventually it moved to a different spot and it sat there for a few minutes and I was able to get the shots I wanted. There will be lots of times when you come across a subject that isn't cooperative and I know it can be very frustrating to deal with, but sometimes the patience will pay off when the subject you are trying to photograph finally stops moving for a little and you are able to get the shots you were hoping for. Tip number two is to try going out in the early mornings. The early morning hours are usually the best and the easiest times to photograph bugs because this is the time period when most of them are at rest and it will usually be less windy in the mornings also. But one thing to consider is the temperature outside. I found that warm summer mornings when the temps is in the mid 70s and 80s, the bugs will still be very active. But on those cooler mornings, when it is between 50 to 70 degrees outside, the bugs are way more likely to be less active and completely still. It is much easier to focus on getting a shot when you don't have to worry about your subject running or flying away. So I recommend going out on those cooler mornings to take advantage of the resting bugs and the morning dew. Tip number three is to get eye level with your subjects. This is very important if you want the best photo possible because we naturally see bugs from an above perspective since they are so small. So getting on the same level as them can bring you more into their world, getting closer to their point of view. Subject level is more about the subject's point of view and it can draw the viewers into the moment and emotion. Just look at this example here. I took this photo back in 2017, a very boring angle because it looks like it was taken at my point of view. And now look at this more recent photo. 
I had to lay on the ground to get this angle and it is a huge difference from the previous photo. A clean background and the subject's point of view. Tip number four is to pay attention to your backgrounds. The background in your photo is important because you want all the attention to be on the subject and not a distracting or cluttered background. Remember that the further away from the subject you are, the less background separation you will have in your photo and the higher the aperture, the more in focus your background will be. So to avoid a cluttered or distracting background, Start by getting closer to your subject, and if that's not enough, then open up your aperture. The lower the aperture, the smoother the background will be. But the only downside to that is you will have an even smaller depth of field. Another option would be to use a background card or something similar to place behind your subject while you are taking photos. Tip number five is to find your sharpest aperture range on your lens. This is important because you want those details in your photos to be as sharp as possible. Every lens sharpest aperture range is different, but it is usually somewhere in the middle between f5.6 and 13. A high f-stop of f20 and up will often result in poorer image quality, and this is called diffraction. Diffraction is an optical element which will limit the resolution of a photo. So get to know your camera and find that range for the sharpest images possible. Tip number six is to do research on the bugs and other subjects in your area. There are three benefits to doing research. 
The first benefit is it will help you predict how a certain bug will behave when you try and take photos of it. Once you start getting familiar with what you are photographing, it will become easier to predict how they will behave when you approach them. You will realize that some bugs will be a lot easier to photograph than others. If you are unsure of what something is, there are apps that will help you ID them. I use iNaturalist and I highly recommend it. The second benefit from research is that doing so can make finding certain bugs easier. For example, centipedes and millipedes like areas with high moisture, such as loose bark or rotting logs. So the best places to find them would be areas like that. You wouldn't go looking for them on a flower bush because that's not a spot where they would normally be. Also, if you like to photograph plants and wildflowers, Doing research will help you because certain plants will only grow and bloom during certain months of the year. So already knowing this will help you find those specific plants. The third benefit is that it can motivate you. If you come across something cool or interesting that can be found in your area that you've never seen before, then this can motivate you on future outings to hopefully find and photograph that target species one day. My last tip is to control the light on your subjects. You want the light on your subjects to be soft because soft light in your photo will be more appealing to look at. Soft light can be achieved by simply using a diffuser if you use a flash. A diffuser will soften and spread the light in your photo. Without a diffuser, the light from your flash will be concentrated on one spot which will create a very harsh and unappealing highlight in your photo. But even if you do have a diffuser, it is important to also block out the harsh sunlight because the sunlight can also create harsh highlights, especially if you are shooting midday. Overall, these are some of the biggest keys when it comes to taking good quality macro photos. Let me know down in the comments if I forgot anything or you have something you want to add. But I hope this video was helpful for you, and if it was, then consider leaving a like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll catch y'all in the next one.